Hi everybody, welcome back to our van build series. I am Mike and this is Sir Cedric, our 1988 Mercedes T1 fire truck, which we currently convert into a camper van. This time we want to build the heating system of the van and we have to solve a difficult problem because the best and most popular heater for a van conversion, the Autotherm Air 2D, is a diesel heater and Sir Cedric, our Benz, is a 310 petrol engined van. So we wanted to find a solution to build the diesel heater in our petrol engine van. And next challenge, we wanted to install the extra tank inside the van and get the approval of the usually difficult German authorities, the so-called TÜV. Finally, we managed all of that and I will show you now exactly how we did it. And that might also be interesting for someone with a diesel van who wants to use an extra tank for the heater instead of draining the main tank. This here is the complete installation kit, which I bought from Tiger Expert, and it includes everything except for the tank, which I bought from Hypro. And as usual, all products are linked in the description below. Maybe we start with the tank. To get an extra tank inside the van approved by German authorities, it's important that the tank is 0.3 bar pressure tested and certified accordingly. Before I show you all the items of the heater kit, let me give you six good reasons why I chose the Autotherm Air diesel heater instead of a petrol powered heater from another company like for example Webasto. First of all, the price. With around 500 euro, the Autotherm is cheaper than a Webasto. And now some of you will surely say 500 euro is still too much because I can get a no-name Chinese diesel heater on eBay for much less. But the Autotherm is EU certified and you can install it without voiding your vehicle's registration. And uh, to be honest, finally you want to sleep with a running combustion engine inside your van. And I really want to avoid even the tiniest risk of getting poisoned. Second, it's simplicity. The Autotherm Air is quite a simple device and that is a big advantage because it can be repaired even by a non-professional and not like some of the super fancy high-tech devices where you probably struggle if you are in a remote area and have a problem. A very big advantage is that it can operate in very high altitudes. A Webasto can work up to 2200 meter according to the website of Webasto and the autotherm in contrast to that is tested up to an altitude of 3,400 meter and its software can even operate in altitudes of up to 5,000 meters. So with that one you can really travel absolutely anywhere if it's Nepal or the Andes, the Autotherm heater will work. Having a diesel heater with an extra tank gives peace of mind because you never risk draining your main tank and get stranded and that's a big advantage if you travel in remote areas where you do not find a gas station just next corner. Heating with diesel is of course more economical than heating with petrol because usually diesel in most countries is cheaper than petrol and with the extra tank you even have the possibility in Germany to use domestic fuel oil instead of diesel and that's again 50% cheaper than diesel because it is much less taxed. Then last but not least argument, you can install the Autotherm DIY without voiding the manufacturer's guarantee. And that's a big advantage because some of the other brands make installation by a professional shop mandatory. And that has, of course, two main disadvantages. First, it's much more expensive. Second, I think it's much better if you install it yourself because then you know the system and later if something goes wrong when you're on the road, you can much better help yourself. That are a lot of good arguments for the Autotherm Air. Now let's see what the kit from Tiger Expert contains. Obviously the heater itself, that is a two kilowatt version and a two kilowatt version is completely enough for a five meter van because it is better to run a smaller heater on a higher volume than having a bigger heater on a smaller volume, which would just uh, besmoke the device. Then you get the wiring harness, which is absolutely foolproof because plug and plug sockets are unique and you can only connect them in one way and no other. So there is no way to make any mistakes here. Then there is the exhaust pipe, a muffler, the pipe for the air intake, fuel pump, the fuel filter, a control unit, and all the small parts like the clamps which you need for installation and not to forget 
a manual for self-installation. Then there are two parts which are not in the main kit, which I also ordered. That is this silencer for the air intake inside the van and this stainless mounting plate, which is very handy because you can cut one rectangular hole in the floor of your van instead of several small ones and it also serves as a thermal insulator. Okay, so far so good. Now let's start working. Already a few weeks ago I cut the hole for the heater in the floor of my van. That's not too complicated with the jigsaw. Of course the edges need proper treatment against future rust. I use Branto Corox because that's primer and paint in one. Then I built a small wooden subframe which would not absolutely be necessary but makes a nicer finish. This subframe is glued to the floor of the van with Sikaflex 552 assembly adhesive. After installation of the floor panel, in my case a resin corded plywood panel, the mounting plate is screwed into the plywood panel. Under the van I will now seal the space between the mounting plate and the floor of the van with Sikaflex 521 sealant. With the mounting plate it's very easy now to mount the heater. You have uh, three pipes which have to be connected under the van. This is uh, the exhaust pipe with the muffler, the air intake and the fuel line which goes to the pump and to the fuel filter to the fuel tank in the back of the van. The heater is fixed with four bolts. Then it's time to connect the pipes. We start with the exhaust pipe and install the muffler. The exhaust pipe also gets a heat shield cover on the first 30 centimeters, which you can see here, and which should probably avoid damage to the plastic air intake pipe which we install next. Last we connect the diesel line which finally goes to our tank. With this extra tank the installation of the outer tam air is much easier than in a diesel engine van without extra tank. In this case you have to tap into your main tank which sometimes is quite a complicated endeavor. In our case it's super easy. The kit already contains a pipe to be installed in the tank. So you just have to cut a 16 mm hole into the tank, cut the pipe according to the height of the tank, insert the pipe and tighten the bolt. We place this tank in the back corner of the van where we can easily fill it up at a gas station. From the tank the fuel line goes through a hole in the floor under the van. And then we connect the diesel filter. Directly after the filter comes the pump which has to be installed with a slight angle upwards. And from the pump the fuel line goes to the mounting plate where it's clamped to the heater. By the way, all these clamps, connectors and so on are already included in the kit from Tiger Expert. The HyperTank already has a factory installed pipe connector which I use for a ventilation pipe that goes under the van. This fuel filter at the end of the ventilation pipe is my straightforward solution to stop critters from entering the tank. Of course, the tank needs proper tie down. For that I already installed anchor nuts in the subframe of my floor earlier. That's bomb proof now and should be okay to get the necessary certificate by the technical authorities. Then we have to connect the fuel pump to the wiring harness. It's a bit strange that this is not integrated in the mounting plate mm -hmm. but instead of that you need an extra hole in the floor for this cable. In fact, with our setup you need even three extra holes in the floor, one for this fuel pump cable, one for the fuel line out of the tank and one for the ventilation hose. So, 
pretty dirty now, but um, the last thing to do is now uh, connecting the cable and we have three cable to connect. That is one for the fuel pump, one for the 12 volt supply and one for the control panel. And now we are ready to test it. While working, I nearly forgot the appointment with my barber. Finally, I changed not only my clothes and haircut for the first test of the system, but also the location. And I cleaned up the mess in the van to have nicer pictures. Oh yeah, and we shouldn't forget the intake silencer. I expect uh, that you have to uh, start the system two or three times before it finally you have uh, the diesel in the line. And um, yeah, according to the manual, it could also smell and smoke a little bit in the first time. Okay, then let's try to start it. The display says heating, that looks good. And now we have to be patient a little bit because the manual already says that uh, it doesn't start immediately, but it will take a few minutes. So it seems that the heater already starts up. Not yet warm. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So we have absolutely warm air now already. That was not even three minutes, I think. I would say that are now, yeah, for sure 60, 70 degree. And um, according to the manual, it's up to 90 or 100 degree. Uh, what you can get with this heater and um, yeah I would say the noise is quite restrained now we will try to remove the silencer and see if there is any difference yeah there is a considerable difference so I think if you want to have a quiet operation you should definitely get this silencer as well and now let's see what it looks under the van if there is any smoke or not under the van you can hear this uh, clicking noise from the fuel pump and the other noise that you can hear is from the air intake the exhaust pipe is absolutely quiet and there is no smoke and no smell at all. So that's very pleasant. I am really positively surprised because I did expect a little bit of uh, smoke and smell, at least in the beginning. So I would say you can operate the Autotherm Air 2D definitely in any environment and you won't have any problem with that. Good. Then let's try to switch it off again. It says shutting down, but um, it will now take a few minutes until it really shuts down. And uh, later I will surely test under real world conditions the consumption of electricity in diesel. Um, at the moment, let me just present you the data which uh, you can find on the website of Tiger Expat. The Autotherm Air needs 0.1 to 0.24 liter per hour. That means in an eight hour night, you would probably need something between one or two liters. And with my 22 liter tank, I could get about 100 hours of operation. And if you calculate these eight hours per night, that would be, yeah, well, realistically, probably a week. And that's absolutely fine, I think. Okay, now it's quiet. So it took about uh, two or three minutes until it really finally uh, shut down. What about electricity? The Autotherm Air has 29 Watt, but in average it's something about 15 Watt and that equals 1.25 Amp per hour. And uh, if you calculate this eight hour night in which you want to heat, you would probably need something around 10 amp hours which your battery has to supply but 10 amp hours is not really much and I think easily and fast recharged again. 
so far so good. Now comes the biggest hurdle because we have to get the technical approval for our setup. That means especially for our extra tank in the van because the heater itself doesn't need any technical approval because it already has this E number, which means it's uh, generally approved in the EU. I'm just back from the technical inspection with a positive result. Unfortunately, I couldn't film the actual inspection process, but this is now the certificate, which states that my setup is completely fine and legal. So you definitely can install a diesel heater in a petrol engine van and have your extra tank inside the van, at least here in Germany. The only thing that you have to be careful buy a tank like the Hypro tank, which has a certificate that it is pressure tested with 0.3 bar. Other than that, just make sure that you have proper tie down and uh, yeah, then it should not be a problem to get the technical approval here in Germany. Okay, enough for this video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about my heater setup and uh, what would you choose if you have a petrol engine van. And I would also be very curious to know if this setup that I have would be legal in your country. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, maybe consider subscribing, both of that would help for the YouTube algorithm and see you next time.